We will now head towards the final stop on our journey, Clifford's Tower. Your map will guide you to the stone keep overlooking the city. A plaque commemorating the 1190 massacre of the Jews of York lies next to the steps leading up to the tower. Stop here to listen to more about the 1190 massacre and the ways in which the event is remembered today. Clifford's Tower marks the site of the most famous part of York's Jewish past. On March 16, 1190, a wave of anti-Semitic riots culminated in the massacre of an estimated 150 Jews, possibly the entire Jewish community of York, who had taken refuge in the royal castle where Clifford's Tower now stands. The chronicler William of Newburgh described York's rioters as acting without any scruple of Christian conscientiousness in wiping out the Jewish community. And William was not the only chronicler to record these lamentable acts, as both the chronicles of the Abbey of Moor in East Yorkshire and Roger of Howden include accounts. Anti-Semitic feeling was running high throughout Western Europe in the 12th century, stoked by the Christian fervour of the Crusades. England's new king, Richard I, was about to set off on crusade himself. At King Richard's coronation banquet in 1189, prominent Jews, including Benedict of York, attempted to attend to pay their respects, but were denied entry. Outrage at the Jews' attempt sparked rioting that spread throughout England. Benedict was mortally wounded in the riots in Westminster. He was made to convert to Christianity, but later recanted on his deathbed. Sadly, upon his death, neither the Jews nor Christians would claim him. Rioting engulfed the towns of Norwich, Stamford and Lincoln. Soon after, the unrest spread to York, with a mob attempting to burn and loot Benedict's house. As the king's special subjects, the Jews sought protection in the royal castle and barricaded themselves into the wooden keep that once stood where Clifford's tower stands today. Meanwhile, the rioters were egged on by members of the local gentry, including Richard Malabis, William Percy, Marmaduke Darrell and Philip de Falkenberg. These men saw the riots as an opportunity to wipe out extensive debts they owed to the Jewish moneylenders of the city. Having failed to secure lucrative royal appointments, they could not afford to pay back the money they owed. Indeed, after the massacre, they proceeded to burn the records of their debts held in York Minster, so absolving themselves from repayment to the king who would acquire the property and money owed to the murdered moneylenders. Now, locked in the keep, the Jews feared treachery. They barred the gates to the royal constable, who then demanded the castle be captured by force. Knights began to arrive with siege engines to attack the castle. As this was happening, a fiery hermit who had been inciting the mob was killed by a falling stone. This further incensed the rioters who were baying for Jewish blood. Seeing no possible escape, most of the Jews chose to commit suicide in the castle. The only alternative was to renounce their faith and face forced baptism or slaughter at the hand of the mob. The wealthy Joske and Rabbi Yomtob a noted scholar from Joigny in France led the Jews in their suicide. After killing their wives and children, they set fire to the wooden keep and killed themselves. A few Jews refused the option of suicide, but it seems their fate was no better, dying either in the fire or murdered by the rioters. 20th century excavations at Clifford's Tower have revealed the blackened remains of the fire. The events at York were seen as an affront to the dignity and authority of King Richard, so a royal inquest was held soon afterwards. This resulted in the city receiving a heavy fine, but by that time the instigators had escaped and no individuals were ever punished for the crimes committed on that fateful night. 
Probably some of them joined the king himself on crusade, as he was by then en route to the Holy Land. The massacre of 1190 was a horrific event driven by religious intolerance and the greed of those who were indebted to the Jewish moneylenders. And it is sadly only one of the countless incidents of mob violence against Jewish communities across England and Western Europe in the Middle Ages. At the foot of Clifford's Tower, a plaque, partly in English, partly in Hebrew, stands to commemorate the massacre of 1190. This plaque was unveiled by the Chief Rabbi, the President of the His Jewish Historical Society, and the Lord Mayor of York in October 1978. The daffodils which bloom annually at Clifford's Tower also have a little known commemorative role. Planted in 1990 by English Heritage and the American Jewish Foundation, the specially selected six petal daffodils represent the Star of David and flower every year around mid-March, the anniversary of the massacre. York's association with the Holocaust and the public recognition of the massacre are relatively recent events. However, during World War II, as the news of the Holocaust was first seeping out of Nazi-occupied Europe, the Archbishop of York, Dr Cyril Garbutt, spoke out against the persecution of the Jews and labelled the Nazis' anti-Semitic act as the greatest crime in history. Although this is now an accepted part of 20th century history, it is important to note that it was York's Archbishop that first tried to draw attention to these terrible events. Every year the world commemorates the victims of the Holocaust through Holocaust Memorial Day on the 27th of January. On this day in 1945, Auschwitz-Birkenau, the most notorious of the Nazi death camps, was liberated. This international event, aimed at remembering the past to build a better future, has been held in the UK since 2001. The proposal to mark the day with a formal and permanent fixture in the city's civic calendar was unanimously passed by the City Council in 2008. In previous years, only a silent few had gathered to pay their respects through a candle-lit vigil. Since 2008, a variety of, of events have been organised to mark Holocaust Memorial Day. In recent years, these have included speeches by the Lord Mayor of York and Holocaust survivor Eugene Black, as well as music, drama and artistic displays by local university students and the Holocaust Survivors Friendship Association. This is the end of our tour. We hope you have found this journey through York's Jewish heritage to be an interesting and enjoyable one. As part of the learning experience, we welcome your feedback. Please visit the Trails webpage on the History of York website for more information.